just because I've been posting a lot of stories recently of just Catalea's eating and people are just like wow she's such a great eater she's so independent like how'd you do it and like give me some pointers so I figured let's do a whole video on it because it starts kind of early on when you're first introducing solids to babies so let's get right into it so first things first put yourself in your baby shoes so this is something that we normally are not taught to do or we just like why they're just babies but trust me and with anything and as she grows it's like a reminder like okay what would how would I like to be communicated with if I was that baby so with that being said control is a big thing it's a big thing for me personally as an individual like I do not like being told what to do like it better be worded nicely or asked nicely if not I'm not gonna do it because because so with that being said, my daughter, of course, is very strong-willed and very, like she knows what she wants. So early on, like she just wanted to do things on her own. Now, the easier thing would be for mommy to feed her so she stays nice, clean, and pristine, but that wasn't gonna help her grow. So it's just kind of lit as a parent is like, okay, like I brought this little human into this world. Every day is they're learning new things, like they're, their sight is developing, touch, taste, smell, like everything is coming all at once and their brain is forming. So as it is, just on, just being alive on a daily is like a lot for them. So just being graceful with them and having patience is huge. So one of the first, first little pointers our pediatrician gave us was when you're gonna start introducing solids, make sure you give her things that aren't sweet. Like, the carrots, the sweet potatoes, the bananas, the apples. She's like, keep it in the palette of broccoli, avocados, things that aren't as sweet. You know, you know, you see where I'm getting at? So that's what we did. And she said, and you know, try it for two to three, four days at a time, like giving them kind of that same and then change it up. You kind of start to introduce more and more and try to push back. I'm not saying ever, but try to push back or minimize the amount of like sweets, like things that you know that they're gonna like, that way you expand their palate. And that was huge. Like I remember making like making her like little cube cereals with oats and green beans or oats and avocado or oats and broccoli, like all the foods that weren't as sweet and good and like dessert vibes, that's what I gave her most. Then I went into do some more fruits and everything. And you know, you guys see her all the time on Instagram. If you don't follow me, you should follow me. Homegirl eats everything. And I think it's been because it was it was at first obviously you kind of give it to them, but I early on gave her a spoon. And so even though I was feeding her, like she was just a baby and babbling and chewing on it, like she was like, okay, well, me too. And so just kind of making her inclusive or including her and giving her like the spoon so that she helps as well was also big. So remembering like they're just trying to learn and this is all very new to them. So it's like, it's up to us to kind of just set them up to win, if that makes any sense. So yeah, so that was big. Um, being careful, like, oh, she made a face. I think she made a face with, I want to say avocado at the beginning. But I was like, okay, well, it's just, it's new. Of course, you're not going to like it. It doesn't taste like your milk. Like, because she's still being breastfed. That's a whole other video. But yeah, like, she wasn't like, oh my God, this is delicious. But she was like, all right. And so if she didn't want it, she would spit it out. Like, okay, like, all right, we'll try later. And that was it. Instead of like trying to shove it down and making it a control thing. Because again, it goes back to like them wanting to have control. Put yourself in their shoes. Like imagine in a day, like they tell you what to eat, what to wear, when to change, when to wake up, when to go to sleep. Like they're being told what to do like 24 seven. So, you know, just be a little graceful with them. So that's tip number one. Tip number two being give them instruments early on, whether it's a spoon or a fork, whatever, like they could chew on. There's all kinds of them online or at stores or even local like mom and, shop, mom and pop shops. Like I found some bamboo ones you really love to chew on so that they feel that they're part of the process and it's not just being like they're being told to, but instead they're also being like included in part of the process. So third thing is setting them up in a place or a way where they know it's eating time. So what I mean by that is when Catalea gets on her seat, when it's Nana time, she calls it all food Nana, like it's, she, she goes to her chair and she tries to climb like, 
she knows that that's her chair for eating. So I know a lot of babies are not a fan of that, a fan of them, but if you start them early on and they see that, okay, we're all sitting down and we're all gonna eat, or me and you, mommy, you are gonna eat lunch right now, we're gonna eat dinner with mommy and daddy, like, or, you know, we're all sitting down, family sitting down, we're all eating together, like, them feeling like they're part of the group, they're part of the family, they're part of the clan. Oh, we're eating all the same thing is the other thing. So I think that's number four. So number three being like, put them in their high chair, put them in their booster, whatever it is. So that way they make the connection like, oh, it's time to eat. And then four being include them. So the whole family, we're eating together, like, and we're all eating at the same time and this is what we do when we come to this table and so that like she's never been like no i don't want to like this is just what we do that's it's very simple it's just literally for us it, it was that transition of oh the, we, we eat here and it's always even when she was little when she wasn't eating solids yet we would sit in her chair and we would eat and then later on we would introduce these solids and stuff but it was like okay like this is just what we do and then going on to number five they make messes so we get to be patient. For me, that's like the biggest word and, and kind of like the word. My lesson I think in being a parent is being patient because my fuse is that, that big. But my God, oh my God. With Catalea, I've had to like loosen up and just kind of let her just do and like learn and be her own person instead of trying to intimidate or by fear or yelling or reprimand because that that's not how we learn and i always take it back to and i learned this from my one of my best friends dr mad if you don't follow her follow her she always says like would you like to be communicated to in the way that you're communicating to them like why do we think that babies are less human beings than us in any way shape or form that's always big and also just they're new to this world they don't know like they're just learning you know what i mean so being patient because they do get messy that's number five patience 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 oh my god i mean if you guys see my instagram videos you guys see like the mess she makes but she eats everything like Yeah, it gets in her hair, it gets on the floor, it gets everywhere, but she eats it, she eats it all because I've never made it a thing of like, why are you doing that and yelling and chaotic, like all that energy, they take it in and now they're going to associate eating time with mom yelling, the energy being all over the place and that's something I've never wanted. So is it easy? No, because just yesterday I had just like, we had washed her hair, I had braided her hair all pretty and she grabbed the plate i think we're having pasta i don't even know what we're having and she just put it right over her head all in her hair and i was just like <sighs> so in those moments just take a breather and just remind yourself they're new to this world this is how they learn they learn through touch they learn through doing and just being patient with it and then i just finished my coffee i finished my food and and i remember being like okay and I was like, mommy, like, we don't do that. But if it, it, like meeting her where she's at, coming down to her level, that's very big instead of from up here. I'm like, mommy, we don't do that. And, and like, this is, you know, we need to clean. And so I give her like a little towel and I clean, clean this up. We don't do this. And, and then so she's like, oh, okay. You know, as opposed to bringing all the chaos and making her wrong. And like, yeah, we could yell and, and, and time out and this and that, but their brains are literally like physically not wired to understand all of that yet. So it's kind of just creating chaos unnecessarily. So there's that tip. And then one of the biggest one is eating what they eat and they eat what we eat. Again, because they just want to feel that they're part of the clan, that they're part of the family, that they're part of the group. And the best way to do that is literally like, oh, like we're all eating the same thing and we literally eat what she eats and which has kind of been a good thing because we kind of eat less processed things and try not to give her too much processed. She will have her paletas here and there, her ice cream and whatnot. But I, you know, her, like I try to keep it just like whole hearty food. So we'll, we eat what she eats. And so sometimes, 
she'll be like oh like here have some of my plate and then i'm like okay so i'll have some of hers but then she wants she always wants what her dad's eating it off of his plate so he's like oh you want some of my broccoli like okay here you go here you go and so like making it a positive experience has been huge and just not trying to push for something or like oh dinner should look like this and this is what it should look like when you eat just each child is different and i'm sure you know next one next baby we have is probably going to have like a complete different personality and so i'm giving you these pointers but also be aware of what kind of personality your little one has because all babies are not the same and you know, you just got to meet them where Catalea is a very hands-on baby. She won't necessarily sit there and read through a book. I'm that type of person, but she will not. Like, she's like, next, like, I'd rather make or bake something and help you bake and help you count and help you move this sand and help you plant. Like, she's a very, like, doer baby. So knowing that and recognizing that has been big. And, and so, like, even at eating time, like, I just, like, let her have her food and, like, here you go, baby. And so she'll feed herself and and that's not an issue and lastly and i think I've, I've discovered this one just as she's gotten older she likes having options so i'll give you an example i started giving her like as of two weeks ago i started this is this is new too i would give her a plate of pasta and just like give her a plate of, when before she'd eat it no problem let's go but now if you only give her pasta she's kind of like eh, eh, and it goes back to that whole control thing so when I give her a little bit of pasta, a little bit of salad, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of whatever, like steamed veggies, like she's more likely to eat it because she feels like she has options as opposed to just the bowl of pasta. So, I mean, I don't know what that's all about, but it just is. And so realizing that it's like giving her options. So like I'll make soup, but I'll, I'll make, like put a little bit of soup. I'll put a little bit of like something separate like nuts and and fruit here and so now she has the option to eat whatever she wants she'll end up eating it all but it's just like that control thing and like they're just kind of figuring it all out so that's been a big a big pointer that just has been working out for us honestly just to watch the energy that you bring to the table literally <laughs> when you're feeding them and when it's time to eat and so if they don't like something, like let's not make it a big deal. Just like, okay, if you don't like it, just put it to the side. And it's happened, like she randomly be like, no, I don't want this, like cabbage, I don't want it. But then like the next feeding, she'll eat it. And, and it's almost like if you give into that energy and like make it like, no, you need to eat it. You da, 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 da. Like they're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then now eating becomes like this chaotic thing. So just patience, meet them where they're at. It does require a little more time. It requires patience, it requires time, it requires like a lot of connecting with your child and seeing where they're at. It isn't easy, but just be great, uh, graceful with them and with yourself. We're all learning, we're all doing this, we're all getting to know each other every day more and more. And know that like, like things click for them in their little brains like differently. Like yesterday I could have, you know, given this to Catalina and be like, here, and she'd use it a certain way and then the next day she finally like gets it and, and like start using it the proper way you know what i mean and just being with that that's just kind of like with the whole picture like at first yeah she made a mess with the spoon and would get it all over the place but now like you see her and she just eats soup like she's just like a little adult and so just letting them be and then lastly what's worked is just as of three two days ago she just didn't want to sit in her high chair and that was different and i was like mommy let's eat but it was kind of like it was nap time already and you know right before nap time everything just goes haywire so also realizing where they're at with their schedule because baby my baby thrives on like having a schedule and routine like that's big so no, so realizing when it's nap time and and when they're just like done like she she just needed a reset she needed to go to bed but she was hungry so I was like, mommy, let's eat. And she's like, 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 no, like, like just not wanting to eat. And I, so I give her two options. I was like, do you want to eat in your chair or do you want to eat on your ladder? And that, so we bought her this like ladder where she can like reach over the counters and kind of just help bake or cook or whatever. And so she pointed at her ladder. So I stood her there, put her plate on the island and she ate fine. And off she went to a nap. 
So it's little tweaks like that that you can give them like options because again, it's a control thing. So do you want this or do you want that? And like letting them choose. And so I do that on a daily with her anyways, like with clothes, with shoes, with whatever. So she feels like she's included and she's not just in a dictatorship over here, but she's been included in the choices she's making. So yeah, you guys, those are the tips more or less that have worked for us. Now, am I saying that this is gonna work for you? I don't know, um, you just kind of have to test it out. Just remember to be patient, be grateful with yourself, with them, realize that they're new to this planet, to this world, like to this universe, so they are just, they're just trying to figure it out. And so being patient with them and patient with yourself and just catch, catch yourself instead of reacting and yelling, be like, would I want to be communicated with in this way? And if the answer is no, we get to shift, you know, take a moment. <sighs> you know and then let's, let's keep it moving let's keep it pushing and and just let's raise little conscience just independent happy human beings and so yeah those are my little tips that i have for kind of independent eating and just introducing foods as a whole i mean i can do a whole video as to exactly what foods was or what foods were introduced to her in what pattern but there's so much information online about that i don't feel like that's necessarily it it's just all these other little tweaks in between that i think can make a world of a difference if we just if we approach it the right way we can have amazing ears and just independent ears but anyways you guys make sure to like this video subscribe if you have any other pointers that work for you go ahead and comment them below maybe other mamas can read them and that you know you can support them as well on their journey and make sure to follow me on Instagram as well for more daily content. And I hope you guys have a good one. See you next time.